What's going on, everybody? JP back at you once again, bringing you guys episode number 26 of the Netflix and Chill Horror Podcast. Joining me, as always, is the one true homie, Mrs. Calry. Oh, Calry. Oh, I'm sorry, I ruined it. No, it's okay. What's going on? Not much, buddy. We're finally back at it here. You know what? We're not even going to say anything about the future of the show. <laughs> yeah, that's, gonna... I mean, I just mean like we're back right now. I don't mean like we're back. Well, I meant we're know? back, but I mean. No, no, I, no, we don't. We just, we're just we just saying we're back like <laughs> show by show, taking it one step at a time. When was our deal. last episode? Um, I thought we recorded, I think we might have recorded it in January because like my goal was to try to get out an episode per month, but it looks like it was posted in February, so maybe... It might have been February, actually. But... So we're not, we're only like three months behind. Yeah, it looks like it. we posted that February 13th, so I guess we, Jeez. yeah. Yeah, I feel like, it felt like we were much more behind than we usually are, but I feel like we've taken this long of a break before, so. Yeah, I think, I feel like we did before, too. In fact, I feel like we take this break every year because I remember like last year, Santa Clarita Diet season two came out and that's when we came back from a break <laughs> and now season three's <laughs> out. So, and that will be the last season. So we might as well cover it on here just cause it's the last mm -hmm. season. And you know, we did the first two, so we'll, we'll you get didn't, to that. You didn't eventually. watch any of that yet or anything? No, I didn't. I totally forgot about it actually. Wait, yeah. I keep wanting to actually check it out, but I keep forgetting about it as well. Yeah. Cause me and you both actually like the show. Like we, we genuinely mm -hmm. like the show. Um, but I know that 22 shots is going to be winding down for the summer break. So like if all goes as planned, I, I mean, I should be more available to record. It's all my fault mainly that we don't yeah. record as much as we would like to, but you have other things going on. You launched a new podcast since we've been recording, stopped recording. I did. I did. It's called it is. Movie. Oh, I thought you were just going to take it over Versus... there, buddy. Movie. Yeah. Or podcast with you and Austin. Yep, me and Austin, aka Austin, aka Austin Schroyer, one of the Schroyer brothers from Woodsboro Bros. One yeah, of the we... three Schroyer brothers. Yeah. The other one being Don and Ellie. Yeah, for real. Don um... and Ellie is his first name, and Schroyer <laughs> is his last name. Yeah. Yeah, Don is short for Don and Ellie. Yeah. In case you guys didn't realize that, but, but yeah, we launched that pod. I mean, uh, we're doing honestly pretty good with, uh, keeping up on episodes on that at least. So I'm pretty happy. I mean, we're on to like episode six at this point and we just started at the start of the year. So it's pretty much a, I'd say a monthly type of show, but, um, it's going pretty well and it's pretty fun so far. Uh, we just had Mr. Watson on as a guest. So really? Yeah. And it was, it was a good time. Did he go all Watson on everything? He did. He like, he like did this, you know, he did one of his big spiels and I'm just sitting there like, oh, well, he just said everything I was going to say. And That's I'm funny. like, yeah, he kind of, he stole the show, but I, I'm glad he, he did a good job and he brought some good points to the table. So yeah, definitely Wa check Watson out. Watson like, Watson's like that guy, <laughs> the guy that you don't mind if they steal the he's, show from you because you know it's just entertainment gold for the listener so you're just like have at it buddy he's like the m&m of podcasting you know what i'm saying yeah or like you bring you invite him to go to your concert and then he ends up being the best part of the concert yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i agree with that i agree with that uh -huh. so um besides <clears throat> that i mean there's been a bunch of streaming stuff that came out this year but honestly like I haven't seen much good. Like the last thing we covered was what the Ted Bundy documentary, right? The Ted Bundy tapes. Yeah. That was our last episode, wasn't it? Yep. Okay. First episode of the year, last episode. <laughs> um, so that was probably like the best streaming thing that I've seen besides, uh, Joe Bob's the last drive in, which has been airing weekly. Um, since, we did that episode. Like, I, there, there, have you watched any good streaming since then? 
Um, not really. I ha- honestly, I haven't really been even looking into streaming right now because I have so many things that I want to watch and like also watching. Seventy two moves. No, 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 no. I'm on hiatus from that. I swear. I watch so many. I want to die. Um, but um, yeah, I haven't really been looking into it. I mean, Austin. I know he he's trying to like get a heads up on the uh, new year and try to watch movies now as opposed to later. I wait till which... like November to do that. <laughs> Me too. Like, because I always think I want to do that, but at the same time, there's so many just. I just wait the, for the good the new... ones to float to the top. I don't feel like watching all the random ones. Yeah, and also like when the new year rolls around and it's like at the end of the year it's all busy you're trying to get ready for the top 10 show and then october you're watching all this stuff like i just want to watch whatever i want to watch so it's like i end up not feeling like checking out the new stuff but yeah he he said he's been watching a few things he said that movie the ranger just came on shutter yeah that that's seems... a tw- that's a 2017 though really yeah, yeah he said that too he said he wasn't sure he was kind of confused they're not on... 2017 2018 i'm a year behind yeah, uh, that that was a that came out last year. There was another one that hit on there too that was last year, I believe, or one that's coming up. Mm-hmm. So um, it's like still kind of slowly leaking the stuff that came out last year um, on there, which I know happened last the last time, like last year, yeah, with uh, like Joe Lynch's Mayhem or whatever it was called. Mm-hmm. Like that one came out on Shutter like in like February or something, but it was already released the previous year. Um, so yeah, I I mean, I, my strategy right now is see every horror related thing that comes out in the theater. Yeah. Then with this podcast, try to see the streaming stuff too, which we've kind of failed at. But, um, I also don't think there was like a ton of stuff that came out. Like I know that Lizzie Borden came out and a couple other things, but no, I haven't heard anybody, you know how like when Mandy came out, like everybody was talking about it and like mm-hmm. all these other movies that, that hit streaming last year, like revenge. Like there was a lot of huge heavy hitters last year on streaming. So ritual, um, oh, there yeah. was a Veronica. Lot I mean, and then like, I feel terrified. like terrified. The one, the one this year, that Braid movie was like the big movie everyone was talking about. Mm. Was that on streaming? I don't even know. I I don't think so. I thought it was like on Amazon Prime or oh, something. Maybe weird. it is. Yeah, we yeah, haven't like, even touched anything besides Netflix and Shutter so far. But there's mm-hmm. like been some other stuff on Hulu, I think too. Um, or is that the Prime? I can't remember. <laughs> but yeah, yeah so. Um, that, you know, we'll, we'll slowly start getting into that, but my, my strategy right now is just to see everything that comes out in the theater. Um, and then, you know, and we've seen pretty much everything, every horror, I think, did we actually see like every horror film that came out this year so far? Yeah. Even like the ones that had like really limited releases we saw. Yeah. Anything that actually played near us. Like I think we've saw so far, Mm -hmm. um, Maybe, like, the one exception is something that was, like, borderline horror or something that wasn't really horror. Like, some sci- something sci-fi or something like that, but... Yeah, uh, I really... Yeah, I think we, we've done really good this we, year. Yeah, so. we've done really good, so that's pretty fun. I love doing that, because that'll give you, like, you know, 15 or so, probably probably about 15 or so films right there, you know, to pad your list a little bit. And mm-hmm. like the next couple months, there's a lot of big movies coming out like Child's Play and It and um, that new Godzilla looks freaking awesome. Uh, some other stuff. So I'm, I'm pretty excited for what's coming up. Um, but yeah, streaming wise, I have no idea what's on the horizon. Um, there's some stuff out there which we'll we'll get to like I want to do Santa Clarita. And then we'll see, we'll see what else we want to do. But yeah, mm. um, that's kind of my strategy right now is just kind of do 22 shots stuff until our summer break and then get back into this and catch some more, uh, sorry, catch some more streaming things. And, uh, also, um, I've been, wa- I've, I've been like wanting to get into like some of my collection that I haven't watched, which I've kind of been doing here and there. So that's something else that I'm trying to do right now. Finish my 31 days of horror as well. I want to do that. Oh my god, man. What? It's like you're <laughs> you can't finish that right now. Why? Cuz man, like 
First, we're not Dude, even like at the one start year of the year. I we're finished, halfway through at this point. One year I finished in September. Yeah, that was like almost okay because you're leading into the next <laughs> month at least. But you can't just roll in July and be like, here's my episode, day number 23 or 22, whichever one you always screw up. And also, maybe next, maybe this year you, you should try not doing all these bonus reviews in the middle of your 31 days if you're going to fail at 31 days anyway. I don't look at it as failing. I look at it as learning. <laughs> learning how, like, you're we not either, learning. Carly, we you, either win or we learn. We do not lose here on the Netflix and Chill Horror Podcast. I'm just saying... I, I understand learning, like, okay, I won't do it again, but you keep doing it again. Now, granted, I think you passed last year miraculously, but, uh, I did. or two years ago. 2017, yeah. 2017, I yeah. succeeded. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, all other years you failed, so it's hard to say you really learned that much of a lesson. No, I'm just on a pattern, fail five times, succeed one, fail five times, succeed one. I feel like that's a good pattern. Uh, I'm just saying, no one really wants to watch 31 Days of Horror in the middle of the year. Yeah. When the I'll do it in June, halfway to Halloween. <laughs> Wait, that's not halfway to Halloween. April's halfway to Halloween. Fuck, <laughs> halfway to Halloween. Yeah. Damn it. Um. So, what else? What else is going on? Um. We went to the drive-in again this yeah, year. Yeah. That was really fun. First time ever, we didn't fail as you would say, and we actually watched all eight movies. You fell asleep during one, but I, I mean, stayed yeah. wide awake and watched all of them. You you had <laughs> one <laughs> moment. <laughs> you, no, I'm just one. <laughs> you had. Uh, listen to what I have to say. You had one moment where you snored, and it was just one little snore, and then you were back awake. Yeah, it does off so, like a split second. Yeah, you had a <laughs> snore moment, and yeah, that was, was it. The snore woke me up. Yeah, but. Yeah, we did, and I think it was the most successful trip we've taken. I had probably the most fun on this one. I mean, the movies that they did, um, I don't know if they were necessarily my favorite uh, streak of movies, uh, lineup of movies, but um, for the most part, they were fun. They were enjoyable films, so mm -hmm. I thought it was a pretty good time. I mean, it, it rains every year, and it's cold every year, so that hasn't really changed, but... Yeah. We pretty Other much sat in the car 95% of the trip this time. Yeah. That's the, probably the most we sat in the car ever. Yeah, I think so. We didn't even really yeah. give it a chance outside the it first It was one. way too cold. It was like, it was probably, honestly, that was probably the coldest it had been. And it's unfortunate because it's that time of year where it'll be 80 degrees during the week. And then the weekends, it seems like. <laughs> things just fall apart and it becomes winter again. So it would just be nice if one year we just landed on one of those summer, summery type of days, but we have not been lucky yet. Somebody, they're probably listening. Certain people are probably listening to this and like, what are they talking about? They went through the drive-in. Like they, they probably don't know the story. So, uh, basically, um, every year in Vandergrift PA, which is literally like a little spot in Pennsylvania, like in the middle of nowhere, it's like, has nothing out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you we even the looked for like a bunch of stuff something. to do on the second day before the movies. And there was just like nothing. Mm. Um, so I think for fun, we went to a Goodwill and a dollar general. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And yeah, there was a few places here and there, but it got to the point where we were searching out places. We weren't even actually in the area necessarily where the drive-in is. We were about 30 minutes away from it. And still, even then, there was nothing going on. So, but. Yeah. So, uh, the, but the one thing that does go on there is this drive-in that they have where they show uh, two nights, four movies each night most of the time. Sometimes they'll do five, I think, in certain aspects. Uh, certain years but um this this year four for four on each night friday and saturday it's the always the last weekend in april um which is technically when the drive-in it's the start of their season like that's when they first open up so they they open and close with like a horror marathon for their drive-in season which is pretty cool so friday night it was basket case the hen and lauder classic made my top 100 or top 50 favorite horror films um your first time watch. 
Yeah. And I had a good time. It was probably, honestly, my favorite film seeing there. Yeah. I thought it was probably, it was a good experience, and I thought it was a fun movie. I laughed a few times. I also thought it had some creepy moments, and, you know, it was the first one of the night on the first night, so I was extra energized and hype, yeah. so... I would yeah, say that it was probably does my help favorite. Going first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then second, it was the Toxic Avenger, the the trauma film that Christian from Exploding Heads famously gave a ten out of ten. <laughs> yeah, I mean that one I actually had a lot of fun with as well. I thought it was kind of weird, but I think it was probably one of the funner films in the bunch as well. Yeah, I actually have a new love for the Toxic Avenger and trauma in general. I've just been dig in trauma films in my later years in life because uh i used to hate trauma but i, I really liked the, the toxic avenger been a real it probably been i probably haven't seen it since i was 15 so it's been quite a long time um dang, dang that's a long time yeah <laughs> uh so um after that was a film i think probably our least favorite of the entire weekend and mm -hmm. that is Slithis from the 80s. Yeah, that one actually was sleep-inducing, which was a shame because you get these two like really fun movies and then they come at you with this film that I'd never even heard of. And it's basically like a rip-off of the creature from the Black Lagoon. That's kind of what it felt like. Yeah, and the creature, <laughs> the creature thing in it was actually pretty cool and it had some cool moments. The problem was there was probably like one or two cool moments and then a bunch of boring shit going on. So yeah, the print was very red. Yeah, that too. It was a 35 millimeter print. It was very red. Uh, and then the next film also a very red print, which I guess serves it right. It's, it was, uh, 1980, one eighty, I forget Blood Beach, mm. um, which is kind of a little bit of a famous movie because it, it doesn't have a release. Like it just had that VHS release and that was it. Um, and a, a lot of collectors always want that film on Blu-ray or DVD. Uh, but that one I actually very much enjoyed. It was John Saxon and Burt Young was actually in it. Such a weird, so weird that both of those those actors were in it. Um, it, it's, it's cheesy and not great, but like, I really enjoyed it. It was like the perfect kind of movie to cap off that night. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed that one too. I definitely a step up from Slivis. I mean, I was kind of tired at that point, but I thought it was a cool, obscure movie to throw into the mix. That's another thing. This one didn't, there really wasn't a theme to these movies this year. Sometimes they theme it out, but this one was yeah, kind of random. There's like two trauma films. There's a Mother's Day and a Father's Day film. <laughs> there's uh, yeah. two uh, creature movies. Uh, three creature movies, I guess. Yeah. Uh, a slasher. <laughs> like, it's just all over. A zombie film. Two zombie films, technically. It's mm -hmm. just all over the place. But um, then the second night opened up with the fog yeah yeah and this was not on 35 millimeter uh the other films were this is on the new this is the new 4k transfer um honestly man like i was going into this i think both me and you are not huge fans of the fog but going yeah. into this i was hoping that it was going to be one of those situations where just the atmosphere of the drive-in like made me love it like even more and like find a new love for it. But no, it didn't work, man. I just, I might even like it less than I used to. It just, mm. I love Carpenter, man. It, it hurts me to say this, but like, I just find the fog kind of boring. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I think it, it's one that I've seen multiple times at this point, And I always think, Oh, it'll grow on me, but it never does. It's not, it's just not what I want it to be. I think that's kind of my problem. Like I love the atmosphere at the beginning and when you do see Amazing. the fog, just, yeah. I mean, it's just like you said, nothing really happens. That's the main problem. It's good on the atmosphere, but it's, as far as characters and just stuff going on, there's just nothing really there. I mean, like it was kind of a cool atmosphere with the drive-in, but I don't think it really changed my opinion on it. Yeah. And then uh, the second film was, I believe, Creepshow. 
Yeah, sorry, I'm trying to get my cat. Like, yeah, the oh. second, <laughs> the second film of the second night was Creep Show, 35 millimeter print, uh, pretty good print actually. Um, this one is the longest movie of the marathon. I think it clocks in at like two hours and like ten minutes or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but man, Creep Show made my top ten of uh, eighty two, and honestly, like seeing it in the drive in, I, I liked it a lot. Uh, seeing it in the drive in, it, it was really cool. Um, I still love the the sad death of or the lonesome death of Jordy Verrill. Like that's my favorite segment, which nobody else agrees with me on that. Um, and then uh, I still don't love the Father's Day segment, which is the first one, but I did enjoy it way more in the drive-in. It just kind of felt right. Yeah, I mean, I actually, I actually like that Father's Day segment. Watching it this time, I've only seen Creepshow one time before this, mm -hmm. so I mean, it's definitely not one of my favorite movies. I know a lot of people love it, but I, when I really thought about it, I think I do. Originally, I said I like part one more than part two, but I actually think I like part two more than part one at this yeah. point. But, um, yeah, it, it was fun. It was definitely fun. I mean, like you said, it's a very long movie, so it definitely yeah. prolonged our night by, I think we probably left an hour and a half later yeah. <laughs> this night just because of that movie alone. But it was enjoyable. It's a fun movie. Yeah. You don't like something to tide you over. That's the third yeah. segment. Yeah, dude, I think it's just too dark, and I don't like it because it's – I just don't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it, it the first time I seen it, not for the same reasons that you didn't like it. I it just, it just it, I don't know. It just comes out of – when I think of this movie, I think, like, oh, it's kind of like this fun movie that's got this comic book theme. I guess it's not necessarily fun. There's a lot of dark stuff going on, but that's, that segment feels extra dark compared to all the other ones. And I feel like – I don't know. It's just one of those things where – when there's one thing in a movie that I don't like, it makes me not like the movie. Um, then the crate segment um, is a really good segment. My biggest issue with it is it's just too damn long. It's a little bit too long. And I really noticed that watching it this time. Uh, but other than that, you know, it's a good segment. And then my second favorite segment is the last segment, the one with the cockroaches. They're creeping up on you. Great segment. It looked great on the big screen. Yeah, I like that one too. And then the third movie of the second night was a trauma film, uh, Mother's Day. <laughs> oh man, Mother's Day is awesome. This is the second time that I've seen it. Also, thirty-five millimeter. Uh, it is very sleazy, uh, you know, very mean spirited, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, this is the one where I fell asleep, so I honestly would have to give it a rewatch. <laughs> Yeah. Cause I honestly, it, I can honestly say this is the one where I, it, it sucks cause I was looking forward to this one the most cause I had never seen it and it was one I'd wanted to see for a while, but I fell asleep probably in the middle of it. Uh, and, um, I don't remember, I have no idea what was going on in that movie at all pretty much. So. Yeah. And then, uh, the fourth and final film, which we almost left after mother's day, but we did gut it out and, and I uh, watched Burial Ground. Burial Ground. Which I'm glad we did hold out because that was probably my third favorite movie to see. Really? Yeah. It's so, it's so weird of a movie, but it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I had fun with that one. Yeah. So. It, it's just very, it just starts like right away and it's just like creepy mm -hmm. zombie things and that little dead kid with his mom's boob. Yeah. What was that? My cats, dude. What are they doing? Being freaking annoying for no reason. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, so, yeah, that was our recap of the awesome 2019 April Ghouls Monsterama, uh, which is always a blast. I like the, the April one more than the September one. The September one is like more like older films like 50s stuff and like hammer movies and like that type of stuff while the april one is like more like 80s and 90s films yeah i mean yeah september's fun to go to just for the heck of going but i never it's I usually can never, nicer I can never really in september too <laughs> yeah i know i wish i wish they would do 
the funner movies then, especially since it's kind of Halloween's about to roll around at that time. But yeah. either I way, it's a fun just, event. Because they started this thing with the older movies, like they've they've been doing the April one like four years less than the September one. So like I think they prioritized that one because it was like their first one. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but um, yeah, I don't know. May- Last year they did like better movies than the previous years. Mm-hmm. The at least the previous years that I went, well, I've only went to the September one like twice or three times. I can't remember. <sighs> but anyway, that's the drive-in, uh, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, that's our review of the drive-in, guys. And we are sticking to it. We are. That is my joke, no. and I'm sticking to it. Right. I made that up. So, what is the film we are reviewing here? <clears throat> Extremely wicked, comma, shockingly evil, and vile. Comma. From 2019. No commas. No. Oh. Just one comma. So, this film was directed by... Joe Berlinger. Berlinger. Joe, Joe Berlinger. Yes. Joe yeah. Berlinger. Berlinger. Berlinger? Probably Berlinger. <laughs> okay. Uh, and he most notably made the Paradise Lost films. So Paradise Lost 1, 2, and 3, The Child Murders at Robin Hood Hills, uh, which is a great set of documentaries. Um um, just amazing, just amazing, uh, about these three boys who were, um, accused of killing these other three boys. Uh, and you're not quite sure if he actually, they actually did it or not. It's, it's kind of like making a murderer way back in the nineties. Uh, and then actually it was my number two or three, I think of 1996 was the first film. Uh, and he also did one of my favorite sequels, that nobody loves, and that's Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2 from the 2000s, from to the year 2000. I've seen that movie probably once or twice, and it was when I was a kid, and, and I enjoyed it. it. I did, I did really like it. You I liked should it watch more, it again. I liked it more than the first one back then. Do you own it? No, I don't. I only, no, I have Blair Witch, and I have the new Blair Witch, and I don't have part two for some reason. Book of Shadows need... is in desperate need of a Blu-ray. Lionsgate, please. I love Blair Witch too. Yeah. These um, were JPEG. And then, uh, also, he did this year's Conversations with a Killer, the Ted Bundy tapes, uh, that documentary. So, uh, he made the documentary, and then he made the film. Mm-hmm. Which is interesting. Yeah. So, uh, the, you guys heard our review on the documentary, um, the Ted Bundy tapes, uh, and this is basically um, taking, uh, I'd say, like the middle or section of that and making a film out of it. Yeah, it's pretty much the same story. Do you want to give a plot synopsis? Yes. Okay. A courtroom frenzy ensues and sweeps 1970s America when a young single mother reluctantly tips the attention of a widespread manhunt toward her longtime boyfriend, Ted Bundy. Well, that kind of, like, gave away, like... If you don't know by now, that's your own fault. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. So this premiered on Netflix May 3rd. So just like a week or in a, in some change ago uh, on Netflix. Um, a lot of people had talked about this before it came out when it was hitting the festival circuit. I believe it premiered at Sundance. Uh, and they were saying that, um, I forget the exact quote what it was, but like it was something along the lines of, you know, th- they didn't, they they didn't handle the material responsibly or something like that. Uh, basically, they the big controversy was that Zac Efron as Ted Bundy was way too likable, and they mm-hmm. almost made you made it to where you were like you felt you're on his side. Yeah, kind of. I mean, 
Yeah, and I just, I, I, I mean, I can't really agree. I understand why people say that, but I think that's really what makes this so interesting. And also, it's true. I mean, it's not that they just made this Zac Efron likable. It's that Ted Bundy was, in a way, kind of a likable guy. Yeah, before everybody knew that he was, like, a complete scumbag murderer, mm-hmm. he was very charismatic, very likable. That was what, like, everybody knew that forever. Like, before the this you know, this movie came out before the documentary came out, like people who have been familiar with Ted Bundy for a long time. I'm sure there's a ton of people who didn't really know much about Ted Bundy who saw these two things and now know about Ted Bundy. But like people like me who knew about Ted Bundy forever, you know, like since I was a kid and even people that are older than me who knew about him since it happened, always said the thing that was interesting about Ted Bundy is that he just was like a regular like guy. Like he was handsome. He was, uh, you know, likable. He was, had a career in like politics and like he maybe was going to be a lawyer and, and different things like that. So, um, I think that people are just kind of shocked now to know that and they feel like, or they, they, maybe they didn't know that and think that, the film is just painting him that way when he wasn't really that way, but he really was that way. Yeah. And I also feel like people hate, just think Zac Efron as a person. They picture him as being in those high school musical movies and being like the pretty boy and stuff like that. And I feel like they're kind of, yeah, see, I'm one of those people where like, that's way before my time or not way before my time, but that's like before or sorry, after my time. Um, like I'd grown up, like I didn't know what high school musical was. Like that wasn't like, I don't don't remember hearing about it or anything really. So, um, I guess that was probably your age bracket when that was popular. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess, I I suppose. Like did a bunch of your friends like it? Yeah, I really, I can never really get into it. I watch the movies, but I hate musicals for one thing, so I was just never a big fan. But yeah, I, everyone kind of loved it. I suppose you would have been in high school and I would have been in middle school around that, in elementary school around that time period. <laughs> so um, yeah. yeah, it makes sense, I guess, why it would be. Because it was technically during your time, but it's at the time where you were already a teenager, and teenagers don't actually like these teen movies. It's always the younger. Yeah, it's like the pre-teens. Group. Yeah, yeah. So it makes <laughs> like sense. Like there might but... have been people who were like fans of it in mm-hmm. my age bracket. But like I was like doing way different stuff at that time. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, I didn't really know who Zac Efron was. I don't think I've seen him in anything ever. But man, he looked just like Ted Bundy. And he really mm-hmm. got down his like mannerisms on like, especially specific, specific um, scenes in this film, which we saw in the Ted Bundy tapes um, just, you know, a couple months ago, like see them reenacted in movie form. It like I've, I got flashbacks back to those scenes like, oh, my God, like this remind this is like exactly what it looked like in the courtroom, you know? Yeah, I completely agree. And just, I, I told you kind of earlier, like, when you're watching the Ted Bundy tapes, I remember saying how at the start of the documentary, he's this really likable guy, and you kind of feel for him, and then as it goes on, he becomes sort of an a-hole. He's very egotistical and just thinks... Oh, he's, he's so egotistical. He he just becomes this guy that you really, go. you're kind of against, because he's so confident he's going to somehow get off on all this stuff. And I think Zac Efron does a good job of portraying that as well. He goes from this awesome family guy, perfect dude type of thing. And then you see him, he, he definitely takes on those traits really well and becomes sort of unlikable by the end. Yeah, the one thing that is different about this that they didn't really show in the Netflix documentary um, was the, the his girlfriend angle. Like, that's a big part mm-hmm. of this movie. I don't, do you remember if they really touched on that much in the documentary? I know that um, they do talk about – he kind of talks about it a little bit. Um, it, it's brought up like he had a girlfriend, she had a daughter, and um, he says a few things about her. And then I know at the end of the documentary there's a clip of her talking about how she tries to kind of get him to confess things and asks him if he's sick and stuff like that. But other than that, no, there's really – it's just kind of mentioned mm-hmm. that he did have a girlfriend, she had a daughter, and he was kind of – 
involved in the life a little bit, but they don't go into any details on what she went through specifically. Yeah. Yeah. I think that one of my, um, one, one of the things that like, I always like think about with Ted Bundy, especially like in this one where after he escapes the first time and he Mm. like, you know, they catch him or whatever. And even the second time, and then he's like still fighting his case. I'm like, dude, like you, like innocent people do not like break out of prison. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) Like, I don't like, (laughs) if you truly think like, believe you're innocent and you know, you're innocent. Like, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised no nobody really says that, but he always has like an excuse too, like and it's actually like good excuses, like you know what I mean. Like he always has mm-hmm. a, a reason why he did something, or like yeah, know. and it 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 just gets so seeing it in movie form now, it gets comical, like whenever he's convicted and all these or he's suspected in all these different states and then all of a sudden it's like oh now i'm in tr- he's calling his girlfriend like now i'm in trouble in florida but don't i believe me i'm innocent and she's like but but you're you just got in trouble in like utah and colorado too how it, it's just fun it's just funny how he's still maintaining this innocence when he's in trouble in all these different yeah. states and you would yeah, think something's up by now you know something else that surprises me about ted bundy in general and i feel like they do a good job of going into that in this film with the, you know, one of the later scenes where the girlfriend comes and sees him in prison and asks him like, did you do this? And he's like, no, did you do Mm -hmm. this? And he's like, no, he's like, you didn't do this over here with the, the, the sorority girls. And he's like, no, um, it's the fact that he maintained that he didn't do stuff for almost like the entire time. And I'm just like, like why? Like, he's just such a sociopathic, like, d-bag like you know like i always Mm -hmm. like if i was in his shoes right like i i did all these heinous crimes i'm caught i'm gonna be put to death like i feel like i would eventually come out and just be like yeah i did do this stuff like this is why i did it like this is what i did like you know what i mean like it just what's the point of lying at this point you know yeah because it's not like one of those mysteries like oh my god what if he was innocent all along it's they get all this pretty solid evidence of it. So yeah, there's I guess only he... one person that thought he was innocent and she ended up having a baby to him. Mm-hmm. But, um, like that chick yeah, is it, really dumb. That... <laughs> I'd be so mad if I was that chick's child. Like, how do you explain that? Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought, I thought this serial killer was your father. Freaking was innocent. Man, honey. Yeah. So I banged him in jail and now here you are. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it, it's definitely very interesting. And I I don't know. I don't really – I know you're into the documentaries, and we kind of talked about this before, and you probably know a lot more about serial killers and things like that than I do because I don't really watch a lot of stuff like that. But I just find him to be really interesting because he is kind of that normal guy, and he does have that way of almost making you sort of feel bad for him for a second or two and then – you know, realizing he's a bad guy, but these other people, such, such as, like, Jeffrey Dahmer, like, yeah, he was a quiet guy, but he was kind of a weirdo, and then, like, Ed Gein was kind of, like, this quiet old guy who seemed, like, kind of a weirdo. <laughs> like, with Ted Bundy, he didn't really, he wasn't a weirdo, he was just this handsome, dude, likable dude, and, like I said, you almost feel bad for him in some aspects, so, like, for me, I know you always say that he's, you don't really find him all that interesting compared to other people, but I just find him to be the most interesting. Yeah. Just for that alone. Yeah. Uh, oh man. Like, dude, there's some disgusting serial killers out there. Like I, I think Ted Bundy is like really interesting for the fact that he, you know, was so likable and stuff like that. But yeah, it's per- not the killings, just his yeah. personality. Like Jeffrey yeah. Dahmer, I find fascinating because all the sick stuff that he did. Um, for you know, that's a different reason why he's probably my m- the serial killer I find the most interesting. And you know, another one that never gets brought up is Albert Fish. Yeah, you, you told me who, about. Do you know you told was? me about. Yeah, you've told me the story. I don't. I didn't really know who he was prior to you telling me about him. Though. 
Yeah, like I remember watching a documentary about him, and it just it made me like sick to my stomach. Like I had to, like I I didn't want to watch it. Like I remember he like one of the more famous things he did was he um, wrote a letter to the girl, the little girl's mother that he killed. And basically the letter was a description of how he killed her and how she was sitting on his lap and he made up his mind to eat her and how he was, uh, he, I think he says like, I, I cooked her like tender little ass over the oven or something. And it just like made me sit so sick to my stomach. Don't ever say that again. What? It was gross. That, that, I'm, I'm reading it from Wikipedia. I know. I don't want to hear it. We're, <laughs> we're talking about Bundy here. Let's talk about Bundy. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, Ted Bundy, he did, uh, I, I mean, some of the stuff he did, like, this movie, I, I know people, their number one complaint is that this movie wasn't a horror movie, and it didn't go into him killing people, they kind of wanted another film well, of let him. let me just stop you right there. Anybody oh. who complains that this isn't a horror movie, that's not a fair criticism, because it's like, who said it was a horror movie? Was the, the director say, like, hey, watch this horror movie, then you watched it, and you're like... Hey, that's not a horror movie. Like, I don't think anybody specifically said that it was a horror movie. It was a film about Ted well, Bundy. So. Yeah, I know, but I think everyone expect maybe not necessarily a horror movie. But I think they just expected it to follow. It was going to be like this point of view of him going through and killing, picking up women and killing them. Even people I work with, because everyone I work with is real into all the new stuff that comes out on Netflix. They pretty much watch anything, and they were even coming in before I saw it and saying like. Oh, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I wanted to see more killings and stuff like that. And, you know, I kind of understand that disappointment if you go into it thinking that way. But at the same time, I kind of knew from what they were saying what this was going to be. And it really is just the documentary put into movie formats. And... Yeah, it's like a straight up like biopic that's, you mm -hmm. know, um, there was one I, I'm not like, I know that after watching these two Ted Bundy things, you've kind of really got into Ted Bundy. Um, there's one that you should check out from 2002, I believe. Uh, mm. I think that's when I watched it and it starring Michael Burke. And um, it's like a longer, well, it's not long. I think it's like two hours, um, but it's, uh, it goes through his crimes more mm. um, and stuff like that. Maybe a little bit more horror, but um yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty good one. You should check that out. <laughs> oh, funny, uh, but um, anyway, um, yeah, I'll check that out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I like me personally. I didn't like this as much as you did. Um, I thought it was good. It was a good movie, well made. Uh, I thought Zac Efron absolutely killed it. Um, I really liked his performance. Like he just really got down the whole Ted Bundy angle. Like that scene where he's like comes out and he's like reading that paper that the, or the, uh, you know, warden or whatever is like reading that paper. And then he's like talking to the press and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they, they're like, you don't, you're not allowed to talk to the press. And he's like, yeah, of course I'm not allowed to talk to the press or whatever. I will talk. I will get my time to talk or whatever. And then at the end of the movie, during the credits, they showed the actual seat, the actual footage of Ted Bundy doing that. I'm like, mm -hmm. holy crap. Like he absolutely killed that. It was ex exactly like him. Um, that was just really cool. And I, I love that they did that. They showed some clips that they obviously reenacted in the film. They showed the original clips from the Ted Bundy trial at the end of the film. I thought that was a really nice touch. Yeah, like, you know, the scene, like, I actually thought it was kind of really sad at the end when he's finally, uh, you know, found guilty for pretty much everything. And the judge is just telling him, like, man, you could have, you would have made a great lawyer. You're a really smart young man. And he's, like, telling him all this nice stuff about him. But it's just, like, pretty much you blew it and you did, you went a different route. And then they even showed that clip at the end where the judge actually said that to him and, that part actually made me tear up. I was like, oh, it's a, once again, one of those moments where you kind of feel bad for him for a minute. Cause uh, even though it's all his fault, it's like this guy could have actually been a great guy and a great productive member of society, but instead people choose to just take the wrong route. 
I think that's the stuff that people are getting at when they say it's irresponsible because yeah. what they mean by that is they show you those moments without context of showing the awful stuff that he did. Like, yeah. In this film, they don't really show much of anything. Like there's one moment at the end of the film where they show like, and I think that's just for like narrative, like cinematic purposes to show like, yeah, he, cause like, if you don't know who Ted Bundy is and you're watching this, like you might think that he, like that you don't know for sure that he was actually a killer. You know yeah. what I mean? So like, that kind of solidified it at the end for like cinematic purposes. Do you mean the, uh, an actual scene in the movie or do you mean the very end where it's not even a scene? No, like it's where he like actually strikes that woman in the head or whatever. Oh, okay. See, like I'm think <laughs> to me, it's like you watch the whole thing and it's kind of sad. And it's got the sad ending and then it comes up with this list of all these people he murders. And I'm like, Oh, okay. That, well, that's, there you go. There's all the, yeah, they, names once again they actually like... even say in the movie the the girlfriend says like one of those girls was a child or something like that yeah and we found that out when we were looking at the names <laughs> mm-hmm. and there was yeah. like multiple like 12 yeah. year olds which makes him way worse in my opinion yeah but in my opinion just kind of showing those names at the end it, it's chilling but i can that that i can kind of see what people me and how you get this full movie on just it's all about him and then you get a list of these names that it, there's not even pictures with the names or anything it kind of just like oh by the way here's actually all the here's the reason you should hate him yeah it's like thing. it's light because it's like text on a black back you know white text on mm-hmm. a black background it's like what does that really mean you know what i mean like can, mm-hmm. is the context there of like this was a human being who got their head raped and killed and their head cut off and buried in the woods uh and you know their family grieving and like you don't get that aspect of it um so i can kind of understand what people are saying a little bit and man that bite mark was pretty nasty huh yeah on her butt yeah i was like weirdo yeah it's pretty gross but um so is this, like, is the story, did his girlfriend actually tell all the, like, is this definitely based on everything that the girlfriend went through and stuff like that? I have no idea, because, like, like I said, most most of the films and docs and stuff that I've seen hasn't really talked much about the girlfriend. Yeah, I was wondering if she, like, told all these events or if it's kind of dramatized or anything. I mean, either way, it's sad to see what she goes through but i just wonder if it's all 100 percent legit that she was just sitting at home and kind of became an alcoholic and then this guy from loser from work is trying to comfort her type of who thing. Haley joe osmond yeah <laughs> like he doesn't he just looks like the typical friend zone dork he's just <laughs> he's like so i'm gonna come zone. to the rescue he's like you don't need that man anymore it's it's just kind of funny but yeah yeah um Yeah, you know, so I think my biggest complaint is, like, I feel like I loved the certain, like, courtroom scenes and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. but I almost felt like I wanted more of of the other stuff. Like, I I do wish it would have went into his, like, killings a little bit because, like, Zac Efron was so good that I feel like those scenes would have been really powerful, but um, I understand that this is more of, like, the side the just the the straight side of ted bundy like they're showing you the side that's likable and like that's the point of it is to show whoa trains uh (laughs) that's the point of it is to show um how so many people were fooled by him that's like the main purpose of this film you know so i get that i I just wished it. I I I honestly wish that it would have had some other stuff too, or like maybe a little bit more of the murders and stuff. Like I just I don't know. I, maybe just after watching the Ted Bundy tapes too, like this is like the cliff notes of the story. It's like the the little middle section where he's like going to court and stuff, and it's just like okay, I feel like I've just seen this, which I did obviously. So I, I, I wasn't as and I didn't 
well, I wasn't as moved as you was by like the certain aspects of it that you ended up like really digging. Like I dug them. I just wasn't as moved. I mean, I, I definitely agree. I think the main problem is if you do watch the Ted Bundy tapes, um, you're probably going to watch this and think it's just a watered down version of that. It's just the, you know, seeing actors act it out kind of thing. But, um, and I was moved mainly by just seeing the girlfriend and her struggles, but like, kind of like I just brought up, I'm thinking, I wonder if this is all 100% true or if it was just for entertainment purposes. Cause in that case, it's like, I'm just watching this as a drama type of movie and that's the moving part for me. But, um, I think definitely the biggest problem is that it's so much like the, uh, documentary so if you're gonna watch it's almost like watch one or another or at least watch them far apart which we did not so but I, I, either way i really enjoyed it i mean i feel like you're de- if you want to see this guy going around killing people you're going to be disappointed but if you want to kind of just see a story about ted bundy and the trials then you're going to like it so that is my story and i'm sticking to it all right so what do you, as Dexter rolls in, what do you rate this film? Um, I think I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. All right. Uh, and I think I gave it a solid 7 <gasps> out of 10. Fair enough, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, good movie, good movie. Just, you know, a little light on the horror, obviously. But I'm not taking points yeah. away because it's not horror. Um, it's still in that area, you know, it's serial killers and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. this was, um, Ted Bundy, you know, uh, I think I'm kind of Ted bundy out for a little bit. Um, yeah, I, I would love to see them make more documentaries like the Ted Bundy tapes though, with like, you know, some other serial killers. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. All right. But so I guess that shall do What it. are we going to do next? Um, I I mean, maybe Santa Clarita, if we got the time. Uh, yeah, or The Ranger, or I think there might be another Shutter film coming out soon. Yeah, The Ranger I might actually want to do. I really want to check that one out, so maybe we could do that next, So it's because it's a little easier than watching a whole season. season. Yeah, yeah, it is your <laughs> pick, so we'll figure it out, and then we will be back. Yeah, yeah. So take us out. All right, guys. Uh, Thank you once again for listening to episode 26 of the Netflix and Chill Horror Podcast. Um, As always, I'm Cowrie, and uh, if you want to check out my new pod with Austin, uh, where we compare two movies together, the Movie vs. Movie Horror Podcast, you can join our Facebook group, and you can uh, check it out on Horrorphilia. And, of course, you can check out JP on good old 22 Shots, so... That'll do it for this episode. Peace out.